What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. I'm in Fuego here. Here for a special vlog visit. What we are doing today is we are visiting the set of a upcoming horror movie made by local talent here, um, made by director Kevin R. Phipps, yeah. along with some other creative people who we are going to meet along the way. But um, this is basically it's a set visit for their upcoming horror anthology, Doctor Seville's Horror Show. Love anthologies, man. Both yeah. of us, I think, right? Both of us do. Yeah. So we're excited to see what we can see, and um, let's check it out. Bevanitos Fright fans, welcome to the Horror Show, and we are so stoked to be behind the scenes here for Dr. Seville's Horror Show, and I have a member of the VFX team with me here. What is up, my dude? Uh, pretty good. How you doing? Doing awesome. Uh, I love anthology horror, so this is great to be behind the scenes getting a kind of peek behind the curtain, but we're not going to take it too far back because that element of mystery is all too important, and uh, yeah, just happy to be here, you know, getting a little peek at everything that's going down. So obviously, I'm dying to know some information about what this entire you know project is all about can you give a little bit of insight as to how it all came together your involvement perhaps and uh yeah just uh, send some insight to the process yeah and no, this is uh, dr seville's horror show it's a four-story anthology and then we're introducing a new villain called uh, dr seville who's going to bridge all four of the stories together so there'll be a wraparound uh, uh story with, with dr seville that we're really excited to get finished um yeah so we're in the effects department right now and Behind me is uh, Tracy. She's putting the final touches to our core uh, villain for this particular story called It's Complicated. And um, yeah, we've been all hands on deck for the last couple of weeks. I, I, I wrote it and I'm producing and helping effects as a lot. <laughs> well, with this title, yeah, with this title, it, It's Complicated, I'm definitely very curious about what the subject matter could potentially entail. I mean, it's a phrase that I've heard before and I see on many social media statuses with people's relationships. So, hey there. <laughs> Yeah, that was the, uh, that's kind of where they came from. So, yeah, we've got people from all over the board on here. Kevin, our director, has worked on a few feature length films. He's an award winning director. I've written novels and zombie special effects books and all kinds of fun stuff. So. We know Mr. R. Phipps. We met him many years ago at the Phoenix Comic Fest Fusion Fan, whatever the fudge they're calling it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's say I've known Kevin for about a decade. We ended up working on a, a zombie short together in 2008 and then kind of just drifted in and out of contact in the last couple of years, reconnected and helped him on his uh, Friday the 13th documentary. Yeah, that was where we actually met him initially, yeah. him and Sean Richards. <laughs> so I was, on, I was interviewed on that because I said I've got history in horror special effects books and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it just it seemed like a natural progression. So. Perfect, man. Now you mentioned to me a uh, event that's coming up later this year here in Arizona, Phoenix Fearcon, and your involvement with that as well, right? Yes. Yeah, I'll be a guest author. At Fearcon, I've got a new novel coming out next month, so dark horror comedy. So <laughs> I didn't drift too far. So What's the title of the novel? It's called uh, God Just Wanted to Play Golf. See, I thought he just wanted to play foosball like in the, the Dogma movie, right? <laughs> Dogma was a huge influence, Shaun of the Dead was. So I said, when I was able to bring the horror comedy elements into it's complicated as well. So it's definitely a, a genre I'm comfortable in. We've all had a lot of fun, a lot of fun doing it. Well, I just love when comedy is implemented into horror because it almost like lightens the load, but then it makes the brutality hit so much harder because it gives the audience that false sense of like, hey, things are actually kind of okay. And then they're just, it's just like, whoa. And it's a common reaction with fear as well to joke and make inappropriate comments at inappropriate times. And so, yeah, horror and comedy does seem to gel well together. So, but yeah, we're having some fun. Now, so I have to ask, what are some of your favorite horror anthology? I'm not going to ask for like titles of films or anything, but maybe particular segments that just ring in your head that stuck with you. Um, I said I'm a huge fan of a lot of the, the Halloween based ones. Uh, Tales from Halloween was, it was a little hit and miss. For me, um, maybe more miss than hit. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I like the ability for uh, filmmakers to 
just jump into different genres very, very quickly. I mean, you have to get to the point, take the punch and end it up and you get to leave a lot of open ends with anthologies too, which is kind of fun. Us, you, you don't have to invest yourself for two hours on a story and have a what if question at the end, which kind of just defeats the audience. You can have some of these what if answers and questions in an anthology without necessarily having to hold their hand and explain everything. And yeah, I've, I like the ability to tell short stories very fast. So. Yeah, just quick like horror bite, like right at you. And the nice thing about anthologies a lot of the time is they, they leave you on like a little twist, like a nasty note at the end. And, and, and the nice thing is too, a lot of them can start intertwining. There's Easter eggs between each of the, each of the episodes and they can uh, really, and that's what we're doing with the Dr. Seville's horror show. There's gonna be elements uh, throughout each of the stories that intertwines them all together without just having a wraparound and then uh, vignettes in between each of the stories. It's actually gonna flow as a full movie. It's not and, and, and that was something Trick or Treat did so well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we don't want just four individual stories that just seem fragmented and unrelated. So that's something that we're working very hard on. There'll be Easter eggs and little snippets to really pay attention to. They might always catch on the first viewing as well. So we're gonna be. Well, dude, I, I grew up on Tales from the Crypt. And so anytime you put the comedy together with the horror and the nastiness, it's, yeah, it's always a, always a ton of fun in my estimation. So I am, Really looking forward to what you're doing with us. Awesome, yeah. I said we we love the horror comedy mix, Shaun of the Dead, all of the classic kind of stuff where you can take a terrifying situation and still add humor to it without it feeling out of place. So that's that's kind of the challenge with get finding that good balance. Yeah. So. Yeah, but it's a fun undertaking, I must say. So uh, props yeah. to you for for making the attempt, my man. <laughs> so another thing that comes to mind is what are the challenges of doing something that's smaller and more condensed, like an anthology or a short or something like that, compared to a full narrative or a novel or something of that nature? Since you have experience with both, well, you still need a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's still a three-part story, three-act story, like you would with an hour and a half, two-hour movie, three-hundred-page book. You still need the journey of the characters, you need your heroes, your villains, but you still have to have the beats that you hit. It has to establish the environment, what's the obstacle, what's the objective, and how do they get there? I mean, you still have to do that just in a much shorter time. So what I would normally do in 90 minutes to 100 minutes, I've now got to wrap up in 15 to 20 minutes. So it still has to feel like a complete story. So it changes pacing a lot, and it's actually not as easy as it sounds like it would be, because you have to get to everything faster, you have to get rid of any of the dead weight, everything, counts every dialogue piece of dialogue every word every action has to serve a purpose so you really a lot more cognizant of what you're putting on screen as a as a big stephen king guy it's like okay i love night shift and i love those short little 10 15 page stories but yet other times it's like a story can be so huge it loses loses focus sometimes if it's too long and so therein lies the, the balance that you're talking about and trying to find it and i would honestly think maybe a short story is is more difficult sometimes if it's a, a short you know, an anthology film segment or, you know, something like that, because you still want to have that impactful punch, which sometimes the buildup just really adds to that effect finally once it hits. So, yeah. And um, it's complicated. It actually started as a script we wrote for a 40-hour film festival. So it was going to originally be a three or four-minute short, and then we put the outline together, and it's like, we're not going to use this for a film festival. We want to put one of the very 40-hour competitions. We want to actually flesh it out a little bit more. So it's, it's varied in size a couple of times. But um, it's, yeah, 20 minutes is it's kind of a challenging time frame to put, put a solid story together. And I think that's where a lot of horror anthologies do fail, is they don't get to do that full journey in the 20 minutes, and they realize they run out of time and kind of cut it, leave you with the cliffhanger ending that isn't necessarily intentional. It's, they've kind of run out of time. So. Yeah, that's a good point. They get overly ambitious, maybe, yeah. and they have too much story they're attempting to tell, and then they have to condense it, and it's nowhere near as compelling. Exactly, yeah. I said, if, you, if you're not pacing yourself right, I mean, I do improv, so um, you, uh, when you do an improv scene, you have to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. I mean, it's the same way. If you start focusing too much on the first or the second act, you rush through that first act, and everything kind of falls to pieces. So it's something you've got to be careful about. Yeah. It's also something like jazz musicianship, where you have like, you know, like a skeletal structure of what you're trying to do, but yet there's so much room to, to improvise and, you know, whatever within those constraints. And so it's like, well, I mean, you still have to get to the end of the proceedings, and that's so important. Yeah, I so said the, the, the audience wants a conclusion. I mean, you can't just say, oh, wait, cliffhanger ending cut. I mean, we have to make the journey worth it for the audience as well. So, I mean, that ultimately, that's who we're doing this for. So. Often nowhere near as satisfying, unfortunately. So. <laughs> Well, the good shot, the, the, uh, that actually rolled across.
across the field of view of this uh, camera beam. Okay. And ended up right about here. Yeah. Okay. I just want to see you here real quick. I'm just gonna see. Um. Okay. Yeah, that looks really nice. That looks really nice. Okay. I'm gonna have you. Can you scoot a little bit over that way, please? How's that for you, buddy? Is that better? Or? Yeah, I think we got lots of blood on standby. <laughs> lots and lots of blood. Okay. No. Okay. Where's our lots and lots of blood. <laughs> 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 Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're going to take a couple more doses. Kevin, yep. do you want me that to saturate the area? Cool. That's well, it. I'm going to try. You want to do some work? You want to shade some stuff? Well, it smells like haunted house. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> That's so stoked to be here with none other than a director you've seen on this channel before, none other than Kevin R. Phipps. What's what? up, man? What's up, Fuego? Yes, that's the name that just <laughs> it, it keeps following me forever. But we have actually been following you and your work for a while, ever since uh -huh. In Memoriam, when we first heard about it, when we were talking with you and Sean Richards yeah. <laughs> way back in the day at Phoenix Comic Fest Fan Fusion, whatever the hell they're calling <laughs> it at this point. But uh, yes, back when they still didn't have SDCC going after them, we first heard about that documentary about yeah. Friday 3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. which was cool. Yeah, that took a second, didn't it? But it, it did. I think it turned out pretty good. I mean, overall. Absolutely. That's when I mean it's a it's a pivotal transition for the franchise. Mm -hmm. So it was a wise move to be covering. But mm -hmm. I love anthology horror, and we're not here yeah. to talk about big properties like Jason. We are here to talk about creative small filmmakers that are trying to bring big ideas to yeah. the masses, which is what you're doing with Doctor Seville's. Horror, horror show, show. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Presented by Dark Descent. So. Ah, very dun, dun, nice. Dun. Oh, I love all the names, and I love alliteration. <laughs> Dark Descent. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> so as a lover of anthology, you know, stretching back to Twilight Zone, Tales from the Crypt, and then, you know, later on, uh, various other things that we've had, like Trick or Treat and Tales from yeah. Halloween and whatnot, I have always loved that sort of bite-sized horror storytelling yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, as I was talking with Craig, the writer, he mm -hmm. said that we have four different actual entries, and then there's going to be like a fifth wraparound of sorts, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. It was something that me and the three other producers decided hmm. early on. It was like, how can we do something that's not going to be overtly expensive and not take up a lot of people's time so we could do it on the weekends? And yeah. Nice. So, yeah. Well, I mean, that's all too often the approach that we have to take when yeah. we're trying to find the time, trying to find the budget and trying to find people who are passionate enough to work on something like this. Absolutely. Not take a big payday but still have the skill to elevate something mm -hmm. and maybe see it become way bigger than you know the, the sum of its parts I guess you could say yeah absolutely and then and you know the cinematography is coming out absolutely amazing which and then um, you know we have top-notch actors which makes a big difference well top-notch everybody but um, definitely what's going on in front of the camera is awesome so Excellent, excellent. So we got to see a peek of a particular creature that's going to be yeah. in, in the front of the camera, which yeah. for me, Cecil and I love creatures, so yeah. we always geek out about that type of stuff. And the design was badass, and I can't oh, wait cool. to see when it is officially finished and what sort of uh, havoc could be wreaked on, <laughs> on whoever in this particular situation. And it's for a segment called It's Complicated, mm -hmm. from what mm -hmm. Craig was telling me. Mm -hmm. now. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, romantic tale. I, I really thought so from just the title <laughs> alone. I'm like, yeah, that's got to be something. Or it's a Facebook but, status. So yeah, but it's <laughs> Pretty cool. Okay. All right. Pretty cool. <laughs> oh, um, uh, did you pull yes. the camera and see what this negative thing is? Yeah. No, I think okay. you did a good job. Yeah. Yeah. Is the yeah. sides going to be a problem at all, Kev? That's what I'm worried about, yeah. to be honest with you. I hate to say that. Because okay. if so, we can just lose it. I don't want that to be in the way. Okay, frog, roll we'll it in. See. Yeah, it's exactly what I was thinking. Can you divulge any details about the other few segments, or are those still kind of in the planning and filming process? Or? Uh, let's see, what can I divulge? I'm like, I feel like that uh, director is looking around for his agent. Uh, <laughs> he's like, he's I, like I don't have an okay? agent, so I guess <laughs> we're okay. <No. laughs> Let's see. We've got one that is technically a zombie flick, but not really. Mm -hmm. Let's just say it's it's got a 
much bigger story to it. Which Interesting. Is nice. Well, Craig yeah. gushed about his affinity for zombie stuff. Yes, from, you know, yeah. Ramiro and Russo to you know later stuff like Shaun of the Dead. You know, so so that makes sense, mm-hmm. obviously. Yeah, and he's got his great book, uh, Blood Splatter. Mm. So, which um, is going to be featured at uh, Phoenix Fear Con, yeah, from what I was ta- yeah, told. Yeah, he's going to be able to give some information about that. And I'm, I, I mean, just from my, my discussion with him, I'm I'm excited to see anything between print and screen that, that he could be writing. So Absolutely. Yeah. And then what was cool is all four of us came together and we just brainstormed and uh, started just going crazy on the ideas. And mm. so the uh, the other idea ha- involves Victorian tapeworms. So it's a... Ooh. So that should be a lot of fun, too. Now I'm thinking system of it down. Pull <laughs> the tape or I'm out of your ass. Hurt. <laughs> yeah, so we got some cool stuff and some very, you know, bloody stuff. You know, we're trying to do, obviously, stories with a little bit uh, of depth, um, but mixed with some w- some of the old school horror effects because we're doing everything practical. So, nice. Um, Thank the Lord. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just one of the things I've always wanted to do, and it's been a new type of experience for me because it's like, Oh wow, that takes a little bit longer than I thought. You know, it takes a I'm lot more time. <laughs> yeah, I come from a compositing and uh, background as well, so I'm just used mm. to slap some green screen on it and go for it. Get but it done. <laughs> it takes longer in the post production as opposed to. Mm. But but no, it's been worth it though, because it's like you want to light it in a certain way that's really effective, uh, not only to enhance what the makeup artist already did, but also to make it. It just see it feels so lo- alive when it's right there in front of your face. Actual so. vibrancy and you know that that realism. Uh, I mean, hey, in a film like Avengers, you know, or right, like, right. Or like your shirt there, when they have an insane you know budget for their for their post production and CGI and everything like that, that that's one thing. But when you're limited, you know, yeah. with resources, I I still think more so if you have the time to dedicate to the makeup, to the you know the practical nasty gore effects, whatever they may mm. be. I, I mean, it, it it really shows on screen, and there has been a backlash with audiences to the digital stuff, and mm-hmm. they love seeing practical. Mm-hmm. They will champion that stuff yeah. when they see it, especially in the horror community. Mm-hmm. I'm a huge buff of practical. I mean, I, I'm I'm an '80s kid, so Same. '80s and <laughs> '90s. So yeah, it's like any time that I can do practical, oh, it's so fun. Now, so the melding together of horror and comedy, which is something that the Craig first and I one, were yeah. talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was yeah. like, yeah, that's my jam. You know, I just love when they can come <laughs> together. It almost gives a, a, a false sense of security and like breathing room. Absolutely. And then when yeah. you hit them back with the nastiness, it just it's that much harder. It's like the peaks and valleys kind of scenario. Absolutely. That's what we're really hoping to do with this is that we have um, we have obviously some of the romance, but then we have some of the yuck yuck. But Ooh. then trying to know when to go back to scaring the audience Mm. and that's been the fun part that's the interesting balancing act i would imagine yeah it's a pretty gnarly and uh but luckily because craig's such a brilliant writer um that it it, it almost becomes easier there it is it's true yeah jake's there so then climb up a little bit jake you okay yeah okay keep going oh she looks amazing keep going i got you i'll tell you when you get close to the edge Okay. That's the end. You feel Jake? Yeah. Okay. We're breathing okay? We're just checking the lighting, okay? She looks good. Okay. Can you yeah. want this? The funny part is, can we put her hair on the other side? Yeah. yeah. Do you want it this side? Yeah. How's the bottom level? Uh, we're gonna need a little bit more, but we'll wait for a second. I'm just trying to make sure yes, that you're okay. You doing okay? Yeah, give me one second. Jake, you doing good? Mm-hmm. What are some some anthology, either films or television series, maybe that really just got their claws in you sure. at, at, at a young age that really in, inspired yeah. you and maybe this project potentially. My biggest one for me, believe it or not, was Trilogy of Terror. Did you ever see that? Uh, everybody remembers the little doll, but that's yeah. really the only yeah. that's the only yeah. segment that I remember. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Trilogy of Terror was awesome because they used the same actress, you know, through a lot of them, mm. and um, I just. I don't know. When I saw that, like you said, it's bite size. Yeah, so and it, it was made yeah. for TV, if I remember correctly, too, right? Yeah, yeah. it was made for TV, which was e- even more awesome, mm. you know. And I still have it. I still watch it. In fact, you know, we wa- we watched uh, quite a few anthologies before we got back into this. We watched Creep Show. We watched Creep Show Two. We watched uh, Tales from Dark Side. And yeah, which is the gonna... unofficial Creep Show Three. Right, as, right. Uh, Sabini has <laughs> gone on record to say he's like, don't don't worry about any of those other ones. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, that's that's probably my height is Trilogy of Terror. I really love that one. Nice, good call. Good yeah, call yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was the only iconic segment from that that people remember, but boy, did it stick mm-hmm. with people, and it obviously inspired everything from Puppet Master to, I mean, yeah. who knows what else. So. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome, awesome. So, um, 
boy, what are some, some is this like the main focus at, at the moment or is there like a, a potential like follow-up project beyond this that, that we, this you is would actually going to be a trilogy uh, no kidding so there's going to be three features uh, okay but, each of know. them anthology then mm -hmm. and each featuring multiple segments mm -hmm. so and then it revolves a certain uh, revolves around a certain somebody okay and maybe so. that's what I, I shouldn't divulge that Craig said about trying to create a horror icon maybe if right. that's okay enough to say <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I I hope so I hope the audience really relates to it in, a, in that way in a visceral way like Jason, Freddy, and all those. Of course, that's what you always so, well, hope for. Hey, yeah. dream big, man. You know, yeah. be, be ambitious with this kind of stuff. That's where the, the creativity comes from, you know, as opposed to just like, oh, I'll, I'll jump on the coattails of this and try to emulate that. Nah, try to do your own thing and just maybe draw a little inspiration here or there. Absolutely, absolutely. So we, yeah, yeah. Awesome, right now, Kevin. it's just like we're so in the thick of it that we're like, just want to make it as good as we can. Yes. And then we'll worry about icon status later. Awesome. Well, I'm very excited to see what you, Craig, the entire team put together. Thank and, you. Uh, we will be tracking it as much as you are, are willing to allow us to. Absolutely. We would like to follow it in every stage of the process. You guys should come to see each one. So. <laughs> you guys should come play in each one and see what each creature looks like and stuff. Because of Fuego. Uh, because Fuego. No, not at all. Because <laughs> Kevin in this particular regard. So, Kevin, uh, thank, thank you, you so, so very much for taking the time to have this tour chat with us of the you know, spooktacular upcoming uh, well, trilogy. So, is it mm -hmm. just going to be different names for each one, or is mm -hmm. it going to be like part one, part two, part three, sort of? Are we? Thing, I wonder if we're divulging the second name. No, we'll make, don't, we'll obviously no? we don't have to. No. no. Yeah. Well, well, well that okay. just means that. Then I will only tell you it involves tacos. Ah, well, hey, because <laughs> everybody here, loves tacos. We're we're here in Arizona, <laughs> so hey, man. I mean, come on, <laughs> tacos are life, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have been Jaime and Fuego, and gracias so very much, yeah. Kevin. Absolutely. Pleasure having you along with us. Is there any sort of Website, social media, something of that nature you would like to direct mm. people to where they can follow this project more so than even the horror show's coverage. Sure, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're constantly regularly updating the Dark Descents page on Facebook. Mm. So it's just literally Dark Descents. Dark Descents. Um, presents, I believe. Dark Descent Presents. Dark Descent Presents. Ah, um, even yeah. you've got rhyming, you've got alliteration, Dark you've got it all presents. going, bro. Say that five times in a row. No, Dark yeah. Descent Presents. Dark <laughs> Descent Presents. Dark Descent Presents. Dark Descent Presents. Okay, yeah. I'm not going to go into a full follow -up. And then we'll be at uh, FearCon, of course, and then we're going to try to slip our way into Mad Monster if we can. Ooh, uh, Chris and Jim are the best, and yeah. obviously, you know, we, we love Mad Monsters. Well, we are Mad Monsters here at the Horror Show, so, uh, yes, uh. happy to be part of the team there. <laughs> so, once again, Kevin, pleasure, my man. Thank and, you. And uh, until next time, Fright fans, remember, stay scared.